Hi gang! I'm going to talk about selecting a coil and capacitor for a parallel LC resonant circuit. Basically that's this coil and this capacitor used in many crystal radios. This is something I get asked about a lot in the comments to my crystal radio videos. Hopefully this video will help with that, and with other projects that have parallel coils and capacitors. What do we mean by a parallel LC resonant circuit? First, here's some background. We'll use this model of the crystal radio. We'll ignore the rest of it for now. This is the coil, and this is the capacitor. What do we mean when we say they're in parallel? The end of the coil is connected to this end of the capacitor, and this wiper blade connects the other end of the coil to the other end of the capacitor. You can ignore this section here, since it amounts to just an unpowered loop of wire. So connecting in parallel means that the opposite ends of the coil and capacitor are connected together. That's important here, because that allows them to resonate at a specific frequency. Let's illustrate that. Let's pick a point in time when the capacitor is charged. Positive charge on one side and negative charge on the other. Since the coil is just a wire with a low resistance, the capacitor is basically shorted out. At first, it's almost as if we connected the two sides with a simple wire. And so it'll begin to discharge. The charge will begin flowing from one capacitor plate through the coil to the other. Current flowing in a coil creates a magnetic field around that coil. Notice that the magnetic field lines have a direction indicated by arrows. That's determined by the direction of the current. The current won't be constant though, because capacitors don't discharge at a constant rate. The current will gradually increase. And as a result, so will the magnetic field strength. The current will exist until there's no more charge on the capacitor. But a magnetic field exists only when there's a current flowing through the coil. Since the capacitor is discharged, there's no more current. And so the magnetic field starts to collapse. The magnetic field collapsing then causes current to flow in the wire. That current flows in the same direction as it did when the magnetic field was expanding. And notice now that the current is charging the capacitor. But also notice that the charges on the capacitor plates are the opposite of what they were before. That makes sense since the current was flowing in the same direction as it was before. Eventually the magnetic field is fully collapsed. We're also back to where we started with the charged capacitor, no current, and a short circuit. The energy that was in the magnetic field is now stored in the electric field, in the capacitor. And since we essentially have a short circuit, the capacitor starts to discharge. But since the capacitor was charged the opposite way, the current flows in the opposite direction from before. That again creates a magnetic field around the coil, which reaches its maximum just as the capacitor is discharged. With no more energy in the capacitor to drive the current, the magnetic field collapses, charging up the capacitor again but with the charges on the opposite side this time, back the way it was when we started. The whole thing repeats again, and so on. But it doesn't go on forever. When the current is flowing through the wires, there's a little heating going on. That heat is energy, and is a loss to the surroundings. So each time, the magnetic and electric fields will be weaker, and the current will be lower. Except that in this crystal radio, there's this short coil here, called an antenna coil, which is connected to an antenna, which is receiving energy from the incoming radio waves. Those waves create current in the antenna, and in the short coil, which creates an expanding and collapsing magnetic field that moves across some of the resonant coil's wires, causing current to flow. It's adding a little energy to make up for the energy lost to heat, and keeps the cycle going. Each time the current flows in one direction, and then reverses and flows in the other direction, is considered one complete cycle. That complete cycle always takes the same amount of time. And so there are a specific number of cycles happening per second. That cycles per second is the frequency. We further call it the resonant frequency. And instead of saying it's the cycles per second, we say it's some number of hertz. Change some things about either the coil or the capacitor, and the frequency will change too. Those things are the inductance of the coil and the capacitance of the capacitor. If we want this parallel circuit to resonate at a different frequency, then we'll need to change either the coil's inductance or the capacitor's capacitance. Knowing that, we can finally talk about selecting the coil and the capacitor. This example is of a crystal radio, which receives AM radio. The radio station we're trying to listen to has a specific frequency. That's a number you see in the radio station's name, 1310 News or TSN 1200. It's also what you see on the radio dial. That 1200 is actually 1200 kilohertz. One kilohertz is 1000 hertz, or 1000 cycles per second. Typical AM radio frequencies for medium waves are in the range 525 kHz to 1700 kHz. So we need to select the coil and capacitor combination that will resonate somewhere in that frequency range. To do so, we start with this formula. 
It's the formula for the resonant frequency of a coil and capacitor connected in parallel. The L is the coil's inductance, and the C is the capacitor's capacitance. It's for that reason we call this a parallel LC circuit. We have a coil's inductance L in parallel with a capacitor's capacitance C. A typical capacitor for these radio circuits has a capacitance of 365 picofarads, which is often adjustable from 40 picofarads to 365 picofarads. In my How to Make a Crystal Radio video, I show how to make one of these adjustable capacitors in the shape of two cylinders. You can also buy variable capacitors that have that range, and there are links for that in the video description. I also have a video all about capacitance and making capacitors, and there will be a link for that at the end of this video. All links are also in the video description. But let's say our capacitor is adjusted for somewhere in between its range. Say it's set for 250 picofarads. Instead, we'll do the adjusting to select the frequency using this wiper blade on the coil. The capacitor is parallel with the coil by connecting to one end of the coil and to the wiper blade. The wiper blade can be moved across the top of the coil, making contact in different places. The section on this side isn't involved and doesn't matter. So the section of the coil that's in use is the section between this end and the wiper blade. By moving the blade along, you change the coil's inductance, L, and therefore the resonant frequency. This is the formula for the inductance of a coil. Notice it includes things like the number of turns, the cross-sectional area, the length of the coil, and something representing the material the wires are wrapped around. I have a video all about designing coils for specific inductances, and I'll give a link to it at the end of this video. I also have a calculator on my website for calculating the inductance. Again, all links are also in the video description. For this coil, using the inductance formula, with the wiper blade out here so that we're using the full coil, the inductance is 369 microhenries. Plugging that into 250 picofarad capacitance into the resonant frequency formula, we get that this parallel LC circuit will resonate at 424 kHz. Remember, we want to be able to adjust for a range of 525 kHz to 1700 kHz, so that handles the bottom end of the range. Next, we move the wiper blade all the way to here, where there are just 10 turns in this section. This time, using the induction calculator on the coil design web page, we put in the values for the coil we're designing, but only 10 turns. If we don't know how long the coil will be, then we can put in the wire diameter, and it'll figure out the length on its own. The inductance is around 43 microhenries. Switching to the web page with the LC resonance calculator, we plug that in and get 1535 kilohertz, which is less than the 1700 kilohertz we want. So we go back to the inductance calculator web page and put in 8 turns instead. That gives us 35 microhenries. And putting that in the LC resonance calculator, we get 1701 kilohertz. Perfect. So our coil and capacitor will give us the full 525 kilohertz to 1700 kilohertz range. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more informative videos like this. You can support these videos either through Patreon or through a one-time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or a comment below. See you soon!